This is Amy Jenner. Thanks for your company with me now. Labor frontbencher Nick Champion and member for Durack for the uh, Liberal Party, Melissa Price. Melissa, welcome to the program for the first time and uh, Nick, good to see you. Yeah, good morning. Um, I want to start with the hiccup last night in the Parliament. Um, comes a, a month after those procedural votes were lost. Not substantial in terms of the bill, but still not a good look, is it? No. Well, look, it's not a good look. Well, let's face it, you know, it is a little bit embarrassing, but at the end of the day, people are humans and, you know, come, sometimes we make mistakes. But, you know, it, it, it was a minor mistake, that, that's for sure, and I'm sure uh, my friend Nikki is going to make much more of it. But, you know, for us, it's about getting on with the job and, and that's what we're doing. If you look at the substance, that mm. is, it's right, isn't it? Because Labor supported the bill. Like, like th th is, doesn't that point to the fact that Labor was playing games here? Well, well, Kieran, the problem here is it's symbolic, isn't it, of uh, a government that's in office and not in power, to use the words of Tony Abbott, their former leader. But they got the bill through. Well, the, but the problem is, is the, the, the symbolic power of these moments, and they're not, not in and of themselves, but in their totality. People understand this is a government that, you know, really has just limped over, over the line in an election. Uh, they don't have a popular mandate, and they're struggling to... Uh, control the machinery of the parliament, both in uh, putting content in and in terms of managing the parliament. And that is a very big thing. It's not a big thing I, I know out there in, in the pubs and clubs. Understand that. They, they sort of see it as us uh, doing that, what we need to do in parliament. But it is a big thing for everybody who pays attention to parliamentary machinery. It's a big thing. Do you concede that? Oh, no. No, I mean, really, this is just typical of Labor, focusing on one small, minor human error. You know, anyone could make that error. Um, you know, we're focused on the more substantive issues, you know, about getting on with delivering our economic plan. And, and really, that's what we're focused on. Um, would we would rather not have a procedural hiccup? Of course we would. But, you know, this is not um, untypical of, of the Labor Party. The Prime Minister focus. would be annoyed, though, with the Minister's oh, concern, well, wouldn't he? I'm annoyed. We're all annoyed. No, no one likes to have a focus on something small like a... a, a effectively a human error, whether that was, you know, the, the minister or, or, or that the person sitting in the, the speaker's chair. Um, but, you know, it's not a substantive issue and, you know, we need to actually focus on running the country. And if you look at the government's record in the last couple of months, they've got through the, the omnibus bill, they've got through those tax cuts yeah, this week, right. uh, the SCFA bill, and then this bill, which you backed. So in terms of the substance, well, you say they're not managing the parliament, but they seem to be getting a few wins well, through. They're, they're the problem is, though, is that this is like a truck driver forgot, you know, sort of forgetting to do one of the tyres up or something. Well, of course, it's, it didn't stop the truck moving, but it's embarrassing. All these mates are like, ah, oh, you forgot to tie that down, and Aww. everybody knows you're not quite on top of things. With That's the problem <laughs> they've got. Everybody knows, not quite on top of their day jobs. Depends where the tyre is. Doesn't yeah. it? I mean, if it was up the front, you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Okay, but, you know, one of the tyres at the back. Let's, uh, let's, I want to ask you about the comments of George Christensen last night on the Bolt report. He says that if there was a free vote, it would risk the coalition. Um, is, that, is that overstating it, or is that pretty much where things are at, uh, in terms of the, the same-sex marriage issue? Oh, that it wouldn't get up if it was a free vote? Well, if there was a free vote, if there was a free vote allowed of your party room, that that would risk the coalition, because the coalition agreement included the fact that there would be a plebiscite as part of your policy. Yeah. Look, um, you know, regardless of what, what George's view of the world, and he's entitled to his view, of course, um, you know, the issue is we've gone to the election with a plebiscite, and that's what the Australian public now expects us to do. And the, on the only party or the only individual standing in the way of us actually delivering that now, as the Australian public knows, um, is Bill Shorten. And I can tell you from my own discussions with people, that's what people are expecting us to do, to actually get on with it. Because the reality is, if we don't actually have the opportunity to have the plebiscite on the 11th of February, this issue is not going away. And if we don't have a plebiscite, and if we were to have a free vote, regardless of what the agreement may be that George is referring to, um, I don't believe that it will actually pass through the House of Reps if we would have a free vote. So from a... You don't think the numbers are there, even with a free vote? No, I'm not sure of that. So I think the plebiscite is the only way that we're actually going to get gay marriage in Australia. Nick Champion, your reflections on that? Because the, well, the problem for Labor is that even if there, there was a, a free vote, and the, the way I see it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, if you have a parliamentary vote, it wins by one or two votes. There'll be a lot of people in the community thinking, well, that's not, that's not definitive. If you have a, if you have a plebiscite, 70 per cent or thereabouts votes in favour of it, that is definitive, once and for all, done. Well, well Kieran, here's the point of principle. The point of principle is, in a representative democracy, in a Westminster democracy, you trust your MPs uh, to grapple with all sorts of difficult issues every day of the week, every day the Parliament sits, and this should be no different. Because, and if we start sort of outsourcing 
um, our difficult decisions from the parliament to referenda, uh, then we will be doing that uh, forever and a day. And it's, uh, you know, it's a really critical point of you know, representative democracy not to do this. Once you do it once, uh, you'll start doing on all sorts of difficult questions. Uh, this is a difficult question for uh, the Liberal Party, so they've constructed this sort of, you know, uh, you know, this mess. Rather than just letting the parliament deal with it, as we've dealt with many other difficult issues, uh, with conscience votes, we should deal with this one. Uh, we should save, you know, about $200 million in the process. That's more than they're spending on, you know, uh, the recovery for Holden workers and the restructuring of, of the South Australian economy. Um, you know, it gives you an idea. Colossal waste of money, bad in principle but also, and bad, but also in, bad in part practice. Of a mandate. And bad in practice. That took it to the election. Well, just because. Right. Uh, well, um, but let's have a think about it. In the course of the debate, this idea has gone from being very popular to very unpopular, and that's because the Australian people, when they actually, when you actually go to them and say, "Look, you know, what do you pay me to do?" and they say, "Oh, well, I pay you to make decisions, mate. I, I, I don't want to have to do this every day of the week. I trust your judgment to do it. That's why I elect you." The, the, yeah, well, that's, yeah. This, and that's a fundamental of representative you, you, democracy. You, focused, if you walk away from it. Melissa it's Price, you focus on what the, the government wants its, uh, you know, attention on in terms of its economic reform and so on. But the fact that this continues, it lingers, and you know, beyond the next election, this will remain an issue not dealt with, mm. Does that is that a, another distraction well, I, that I, I you and the is. Prime Minister yeah. don't need? Yeah, that's right. And, espe and especially, you know, the Labor Party's out there saying that the Australian public can't be trusted with this really important issue. Even though we went to the election, people are expecting us to have the plebiscite, you know, by and large, from my own reading, people are happy to, you know, to participate in this process. Um, it is a distraction, and, and if we don't have the plebiscite, this issue is not going to go away. Well, it well, it will still be there. We, even if we had a free vote, it, well, it's not going to get thing, up. It won't go away. Well, you keep saying that, but you don't know. And the problem is, the real problem for the coalition is it's essentially going to divide their party. And George was out there sending up these smoke signals. And normally nobody in Australia would know who the hell George is, right? We shouldn't know because he's this obscure backbencher, you know, who's <laughs> frankly should be obscure, but instead he's running the government. Right, okay. No, oh, no offence no offense to, to George, but uh, anyway, Nick Champion and Melissa Price, thank you for your time. <laughs> nice to see you both. A quick break. Back in just a moment.